Hey guys, I'm Isabel. I'm a product manager here at Analog. And today I'm going to be talking you through how to use the Analog Watch portal. So before that, let me tell you what the Analog Watch is. Analog Watch is a robust collection of tools and libraries meticulously crafted to empower you to publish, index, and query data from connected blockchains. So these connected blockchains currently include Ethereum, Astar, and we'll soon be adding many more to that list. Analog Watch comprises of three main components. The first is the Watch API, the second is the Watch SDK, and the third is the Watch Portal. So the Watch Portal is what we're going to be diving deeper into today. The Watch Portal serves two main functionalities. The first is being able to design data. So users can basically list and add smart contracts that holds the data that they're looking to retrieve, or they can build customized single-chain or multi-chain queries. We call those views. So that's the first functionality. The second functionality is holding a data library where users will be able to browse through data that they have created or data that other users have created. Now that we know what Analog Watch is, let's dive into a real use case example of how and why we would use the Analog Watch. You've probably heard of how DeFi activities enable billions of dollars worth of trades across various blockchains. Much of these activities take place on DEXs, creating siloed amounts of on-chain data that often result in price discrepancies. With Analog Watch, you can now compute accurate price discoveries for assets across different DEXs. By aggregating price feeds from multiple DEXs, your users get to receive the best possible price for their assets, regardless of the token they are trading. So this is just one example of a use case that Analog Watch can power. So let's dive into a practical example of this specific use case. So I'm going to show you how you can aggregate price feeds from two smart contracts. So in order to do that, first, we need to actually list these smart contracts. This is the landing page for Analog Watch. You can navigate to the smart contracts tab up here by clicking on it. And you'll see this form where you need to basically insert the details of the smart contract that you're trying to add. So let's take it a simple example of a token pairing ETH over USDT. Let's compare the price of this token pairing on two DEXs on Ethereum. So the first DEX can be Uniswap and the second, let's use Curve. You need to paste the contract address. So I'm going to paste the contract address for the Uniswap contract that I mentioned here. I'm going to give it the identifier, which is the name. So I'm going to call it Uniswap ETH USDT. And then I'm going to select the instance. So it's mainnet. I'm going to select the chain. I'm going to give it some tags. Let's give it Ethereum. Let's give it the DEX tag. So this is the Uniswap token pairing contract for an USDT. So I'm just going to write that in the description. So now I'm going to hit next to move forward. So now it's going to prompt me to connect my wallet. I need to be connected with a substrate wallet in order to actually add a smart contract. These are the preferred advised substrate wallets for you to connect. Polkadot, Subwallet, Encrypt, or Talisman. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my Polkadot JS wallet. So I've connected before, which is why it's popping up here, but I'm just gonna redo that now. Okay, so my account is connected and now I'm gonna click on next. And now it's gonna load the smart contract with all of the different functions that are part of this contract. In order to add this contract, I need to really understand what functions I need for fetching the price data of this token pairing and building out that use case that I mentioned before. So aggregated price feed, of a token pairing from two contracts, both on the same Ethereum chain. So the contract functions that I want are slot zero. I did some research previously, and slot zero is basically the function that delivers the price to me. So I'm going to select that one. And that's the only function that I need. So I'm just going to move forward. So I'm going to click on list and wait for it to load. Okay, so your newly smart contract is successfully listed. So this is the smart contract that I just listed. You notice how it shows my wallet address here because I'm the publisher. It shows the contract address. It shows when I created it. And it also shows the number of views that it has, which currently there are no views that were created with this data. And it shows the number of functions that have been listed from this address. So I just listed the slot zero one, which is why it's appearing here. And then it shows me some details about the contract, so the ABI, and I can copy that if I need to. Now we need another contract listed. 
So I'm going to click on the smart contract button again, and now I land on the form again. So I'm going to paste the smart contract address here. I'm going to give it a name. Let's call it Curve ETH USDT. Let's select the instant mainnet. Let's select the chain and let's give it tags again. So let's just give it the same tags as we did last time. And now let's give it a description. So this is the curve token pairing contract for ETH and USDT. So I'm going to hit next. So we couldn't find the smart contract. All right. So this is another option for basically listing a smart contract is to paste the ABI. If you paste the smart contract address and we can't find it, then you can also try copying and pasting the ABI of the contract. So let me just get that ABI for this contract. Okay, so I copied it and now let me paste it. I'm gonna hit next. Right, so now we've been able to fetch all of the functions of that contract with the ABI. So for this use case, I did some research prior once again, and I know the functions that I need. So let me go ahead and just find them. So what I need here is I need virtual price, and that was it. So let me click on list to add this smart contract. And congratulations, your newly created smart contract is successfully listed. So it's going to land me on that smart contract page again. And again, you can see that my publisher wallet address is here, the contract address, when it was created, the views that this makes up, which is none right now, the functions that I listed, and some contract details, the ABI. And then you can also see my tags up here. And now we can go ahead and click on create view to build a view with this contract. Basically what this is, is you're building your customized query. So on the left nav here is where you can search for the smart contracts that you've listed. So I'm going to search for Uniswap. Um, you can also use these tags to just quick filter. So I found my Uniswap smart contract here. I'm going to expand it. And this is the function that I listed. So to populate my query, I'm going to click on it. And you'll notice that it populates the controller in the middle. And on the right side, you'll notice that it automatically generates the SQL statement for the query. It basically displays all of the different fields. And you can go ahead and rename the fields if you want to. At this time, I'm not going to rename any of them. I'm fine with how they are. Um, if I wanted to remove a function that I selected, I could just click on the X. And to re-add, just repopulate it like that. Um, so for my specific use case, I want to compare the price of that token pairing from two different DEXs. So I'm going to search for my second smart contract now, which was Curve. I'm going to populate the controller with the function, I think it was get virtual price. And I'm fine with how it is. So now I can go ahead and give my view a name. So I'm just going to call it Uniswap Curve. Okay. So this definition on the right side here is an SQL statement. So you can pretty much edit it to be whatever you want it to be. You can go ahead and add in any formulas or anything additional. So this is editable. And as soon as you edit here, if you go back to the actual controller, then it'll tell you that you're actually in manual editing mode. And if you exit manual mode, it'll revert your changes in the definition. So I'm happy with the way it is because we just want to grab the price and that's all we want at this time. In order to move forward, I'm going to click on test query. If you haven't yet connected your wallet, then it's going to prompt you to connect your wallet at this time. The next step is to test query in my view. What this does is it does a test run of your query and it serves you a sample of what your query would look like. So here it's just listing all the different column names and they're going to appear side by side for each of the functions that you've selected. So once I've had a look at this and I'm happy with what my view looks like, I can go ahead and deploy my view. When you click on deploy view, you got to add some tags to the view. It'll auto add the chain tag for the smart contracts that you used for this view. And you can go ahead and add whatever else you want. So let's add Add price to this. Let's add dex to this. That's all. So insert a description for the views. You can actually go ahead and also check out our docs if you need help with guidelines on how to create a view as well. So you can hit next. 
So for this step, it's basically selecting use cases that this view could power. Let's go with historical price analysis and a rebasing mechanism since I'm pretty much fetching price data. So we have another feature here where you could submit this for our watch game shortlisting. So the watch game is part of our incentivized testnet and really simple explanation is it's a game where people would vote on the views that they think are most valuable. So I don't want to submit it for that at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and just complete. Congratulations, my view is successfully deployed. So now I can visit the view. And so this is the view that I just created. You can see the publisher details, the index status. If the index status is already active, it means that the functions used in this view are already funded in some other view. Um, the view currently has a balance as well. So this basically is a balance that will be used to index the view. So currently it's at zero and I can go ahead and add funds to that as well. I'll show you that in a second. So if you scroll down here, you'll see the data output. So you see the different columns side by side, as we saw in the sample test query just now. Um, you can click on smart contracts. So this shows you the smart contracts where you retrieve the data from. You can click on definition and this shows you the SQL statement, or you can click on stats to see the query stats. For every view that is deployed, we basically need to make sure that it is being indexed before we can actually query that view and use it. As I just mentioned, if the status is already active, it means that the functions used in this view are already being funded in some other view. So in a case like this, you could actually already query this view without funding it. But let's go ahead and try and fund this view just so you guys understand how that works. You just simply click on add funds. You get this pop up, add funds to index this view. So basically your connected wallet will hold the testnet and log faucet tokens and it'll show you your balance here. And you basically just need to insert the balance that you want to add here. Whenever you insert the balance, um, below here is going to dynamically update the number of cycles that that balance funds. The minimum amount that you can fund a view with should cover a thousand cycles for that view. Congratulations, I successfully funded it. Now I can have a look at the funding activity to see all of the deposits that have been made to this view previously. I can see mine over here, and I can also see the rewards that I've earned from this. One of the incentives to funding views is you'll earn rewards when other people start querying that view. Now let's have a look at the profile page. On your profile page, you'll be able to see an overview of all of your activity on the watch. So you'll see your wallet address connected here. You can copy that if you need to. You can download the session key directly from your profile page with the watch SDK. You can check out your connected wallet balance, and then you can also deposit funds into here or withdraw funds from here. And you can also check out the balance history to see your activity with this account. You can see all of the data designs that you have created. So you can see the smart contracts you've listed, how many views you've created, your total earnings, your total spent as well. And then down here in the data design tab, you'll be able to see the exact smart contracts that you created. So we went ahead and listed these two contracts. And then you can also check out uh, the views that you've created here. In this next tab, API keys is where you can generate your API keys for you to use with the watch SDK. To generate an API key, click on the Add API Key button, give it a project name, generate it, sign it with your wallet, and then it's done. So you can download the secret or you can copy it and store it somewhere safe and then hit next to finish. And now you'll be able to see your API key created here. You can click into it to browse the details. You can deactivate it here, or you can basically edit the name if you need to. So going back to the profile page, there's one last tab here. So it's funded views. So this is basically where you'll be able to see all the views that you funded, and you'll be able to see the rewards that you have earned for each view as well. So now let's have a look at the library. This is the library for the watch portal, and this is where you can browse through all of the data that has been added or created. So you can browse through all the smart contracts that have been listed by yourself or by other users. 
And you can also browse through all the views that have been created by yourself or other users once again. You can use these quick filters to just easily skip through. You can use the search bar to search by keywords. You can use tags as well. You can sort by latest created. You can sort by active. So this refers to the indexing status for views. And then you can go ahead and also check out the grid view just to have an easier view of all of the data types. And that's pretty much it for the library page. You can also navigate to our documentation from the watch portal by clicking on this button here. This will take you to our Gitbook docs where you'll find documentation about the analog network. You'll find the architecture, you'll find some developer guides, and you'll also find some FAQs. You can also scroll down to the bottom of this page here and click on this feedback button to give us feedback directly, or you can give us feedback on our Discord as well. In a nutshell, Analog Watch is a tool that streamlines blockchain infrastructure and facilitates efficient cross-chain data queries in a secure and seamless manner. Whether your focus is on DeFi applications, NFT marketplaces, gaming ecosystems, or cross-chain collaborations, Analog Watch stands as your trusted solution.